Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video here on FBL Now. Today we're going to be going over my updated free hit draft for double game week 34. So if you're excited for the video, drop a like down below. Leave a comment, are you playing your free hit this week? Subscribe if you're brand new and let's get into the video. So starting things off, in goal it has not changed. I've still got Henderson. I think he's arguably the best goalkeeper to own this week. I know obviously that like, like Raya and Allison are obviously in better defensive teams, but I think you'd rather have their outfield players than the goalkeeper. So in terms of like... All the players available that have doubles this week, I think Henderson, for the price and obviously for kind of the fixtures, I think he's arguably the best one to own because, like I say, you're going to want like a Salah instead of an Allison, etc. For, for the outfield players. I mean, West Ham at home and Newcastle at home, obviously they can easily concede in both of those games. But um, Newcastle aren't te technically that good away from home and West Ham a little bit all over the place at the moment as well. So, yeah, I mean, after that big Liverpool win as well, I think Crystal Palace obviously have a lot of... A lot of things going for them right now and, you know, double home fixtures. Can't really go wrong with that. Plus, I don't really have any outfield players attacking Crystal Palace's defense this week. So it's kind of raising the bar of how many potential points that I could get. Because that's always the thing with double game weeks. When there's not that many, you're always going to have like attackers playing defenders, etc. But because there's quite a few this week, you can actually get a free hit draft where like nobody's playing each other and that'll just kind of like raise the points because obviously if you've got an attacker playing a defender if that attacker scores a defender can't get a clean sheet whereas if you have no attackers and defenders playing they can get attacking returns and they can get clean sheets and stuff so that's the way i kind of always try and distinguish my team i've only got one player playing the rest of my team this week so on paper it's not too bad uh, but uh, either way yeah henderson is in goal my backup keeper is pickford who's on the bench Forest at home and Liverpool at home. But as I just say, that Liverpool at home fixture, I'm going to have three Liverpool players attacking that um, that Everton back line. So it's, it's just going to lower the amount of points. Obviously, you can get like save points and stuff from a goalkeeper. So it's not the worst thing in the world. But with defenders, you know, if, if they're just like a centre-back, like a, a Van Dijk or someone who doesn't have an amazing amount of goal threat uh, as, 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 a, as kind of compared to like a fullback or something, then yeah, once that clean sheet goes you're not really playing for much more but either way we've got Henderson in goal with West Ham and Newcastle at home at the back we've got eight Nori Ben White and I've also downgraded Trent to Virgil van Dijk again I'm gonna wait for the Atlanta game today obviously before I finalize my team and see who's kind of playing in that fixture and stuff if Trent starts that then you know maybe it gives me a little bit more of a reason to kind of go uh with Trent over Virgil van Dijk another player is obviously Robertson as well he's played a lot more minutes he's a lot more kind of um he's a lot more fit at the moment you know he's, he's back to full fitness and stuff so i don't necessarily mind playing robertson but i feel like when when trent plays robertson just doesn't get as forward so i'm not sure i feel like trent will start one of the fixtures probably the everton fixture but at the same time you know if liverpool lose tonight which you know they've got they've got quite a big mountain to climb they've only really got the prem to play for so they're just gonna it's just like arsenal like they're, they're just gonna play a full strong 11 every single week because that's all they literally have to play for now so if Trent can play, I feel like he's going to play, especially because Bradley's out for a few weeks now as well. Like, that's been confirmed. So, yeah, I mean, Gomez can obviously play right back, left back, wherever back. But I still think that uh, Van Dyke's the safest option. But I, I wouldn't make, I obviously wouldn't mind playing Trent because the upside is so much higher. But is he going to get 290 minutes? Probably not. I wouldn't mind him getting like 120 minutes across both games. That would be fine as long as he reaches the 60 minute mark. But we'll see what happens. But either way, got Van Dyke at the moment. Uh, got Ben White as well. Um, again, he he is still, I, I think, the most attacking defender you can really have from that Arsenal defense. Obviously, Gabriel really good on set pieces and stuff. But Ben White is a little bit of a differential. Like everybody owns Gabriel and Saliba. Uh, it might even make more sense to go like double Arsenal defense. But because it's Wolves away and then Chelsea at home, I feel like they will keep a clean sheet. But I just kind of... I kind of like having the attackers more from, from Arsenal. I feel like the upside is higher for them. So I've gone Ben White from the back line. And then obviously Eight Nori is the player that I really just don't know who to put there because he's got Arsenal at home and Bournemouth at home. And I have Arsenal and Bournemouth players attacking the Wolves back line. So it's kind of limiting the clean sheet potential points from Eight Nori there. Uh, but at the same time, there's just... I mean, I could play like a Bournemouth defender, but they've got Villa away and the Wolves away. And I just don't really think Bournemouth are going to keep a clean sheet. Um, so I don't really know who else to play, um, ideally. Like, there's there's not really that many options. I've just gone 8 Nori because he's one of the most attacking kind of fullbacks out of the double game week teams this week. So that's kind of the reason. But again, because he's like still flagged 
I'm not going to go into the game week unless, you know, Gary O'Neill says he's absolutely fine. He's definitely going to play. So uh, either way, that, that's the back line at the moment. But yeah, very well could uh, easily change. Uh, in midfield, it is also changed as well. We've got Eze, Havertz, Salah, Saka and Elise as well. So double Palace, double Arsenal. And then, of course, uh, Salah in the middle there as well. Looks very, very nice, like very mirrored there as well. Crystal Palace, Arsenal, Liverpool, Arsenal, Crystal Palace. But uh, yeah, Eze, I think, is one of the best options to own this week for the double. Um, his minutes are way back up you know he's going to be playing hopefully around 80 minutes uh both fixtures over this double west ham at home newcastle at home some nice fixtures there like i say both at home so you can't really argue with that uh i think he's on penalties as well so that's obviously a massive uh huge kind of green flag for Eze as well and again he's not super highly owned like a lot of people might be bringing him in this week a lot of people are dead end ending their team into game week 35 so they obviously can wildcard and stuff. So they might be getting rid of a son this week for Eze, etc. Which is fair enough. But uh, yeah, I think Eze, on my on my free hit, he's, he's, a, he's a given. I can't see myself not going with him, uh, not going without him. We then have Havertz as well. He did play uh, up top for Arsenal last night in the Champions League. I feel like he's just going to play a lot better there. They changed it for Villa and he just it just kind of didn't work. Like it's a proven formation like it works when Havertz plays up top and stuff and I think that that's just going to be the situation now going forward I think he's hopefully going to play as the, like that kind of number nine role for Wolves away and then Chelsea at home uh, I'd expect him to play there anyway because the one time it changed against Villa they they got battered well they didn't get battered but they lost 2-0 obviously not ideal uh, and then obviously they lost against Bayern Munich last night but that was a tough fixture in itself so yeah I'm absolutely fine playing Havertz um, I think he's definitely going to be on my draft a lot of people are wondering whether you should play like Odegaard instead and I could obviously see the benefits for that it it's generally just like a coin toss, you know, Havertz or Erdegaard. You could go all three and just play no Arsenal defence, but because of how highly owned Arsenal defenders are going to be this week, I think it makes more sense to at least have one of them. So that's why I've gone Havertz. Uh, Salah is my current captaincy, but uh, again, that, that could change. I don't really know who it would change to. I think Salah is going to be the most owned captain this week, but um, Saka is obviously up there. I mean, Havertz could even be a good shout as well, to be fair. I don't even mind that. But uh, yeah, Salah obviously has to be in the team regardless. Uh, and then Saka as well, another player that's going to be super highly owned, uh, has to be in the team on penalties, on some set pieces and stuff. Um, again, Saka's he's dipped a tiny bit in form, I'd, I'd say, but I think he's still going to be a, a really nice option. I mean, a lot of people are going to get rid of him after this game week anyway. I already got rid of him last week, uh, brought in uh, Foden for him. So, so, uh, yeah, Saka probably not going to be in my team. Probably not going to have any Arsenal players for the remainder of the season now because they've got no doubles coming up. Um, and the fixture run isn't exactly like the best that you could probably have. Uh, they've got a Bournemouth fixture coming up, which is quite nice. Quite nice. But they've got Spurs away, United away. You know, two two tough places to, to go. So, um, yeah, I don't think I'll be owning any Arsenal players this season. And I've also brought in Elise as well um, and took out Jota. Again, I'm waiting for like minutes and stuff, but... Um, his minutes, Elise's minutes have been a lot better. And I think he's such a good differential to have on a, on a free hit as well. 0.7% owned. Um, I think it's it's honestly between him and Matata. Um, and yeah, I just think because of the the extra points and stuff that Elise gets from like a goal and stuff, I, I think I'd prefer him. But Matata minutes is obviously a lot higher. It's just, it's honestly, I need to wait for the Liverpool game really to obviously finalize my free hit draft, which is obviously what I'm going to do. But um, as of right now, I, I, I do quite like this midfield. I think it's a solid midfield and I'm quite happy with it. Um, as as my five midfielders, obviously playing a 3-5-2 uh, this week. So that's the midfield. And then up top, we do have Solanke, who's got Villa away and Wolves away. And then we've also got uh, Darwin Nunes as well, who's got Fulham away and Everton away. So again, it, it all depends on minutes. With Jota being back now as well, it definitely hurts Darwin's minutes. But I think Darwin probably is... I guess in that starting 11, I feel like is one of the stronger players to have. Obviously, Jota, Diaz are really strong. Like, Salah's not going to lose his place. But, um, it's you know, Gakpo's, I don't think, really in the question because he's just been so off form at the moment. But, you know, these two, I think, um, I think definitely have a really, really good... Uh, the, the, the Jota, Darwin, and, and Diaz obviously have all have a good shout to get into that uh, starting 11. But we've gone with Darwin at the moment. But, again, it could easily change um, in... Double game week uh, in double game with 34. Uh, and then the bench is just Pickford, who's got Forest home, Liverpool at home. Uh, Kuna, who's got Arsenal at home, Bournemouth at home. Again, I could play him instead of Darwin, but because he's playing Arsenal, um, it just kind of, like I say, hinders the points a bit. But don't mind him playing Bournemouth. That'd be quite nice. Zabani's also on the draft as well. Villa away and Wolves away. And then Branthwaite, who's got Forest home and Liverpool at home as well. Uh, so that's how the free hits currently looking. Again, um, after tonight, I'll obviously know a lot more on what my team's going to look like. I'll make a final uh, free hit draft tomorrow and the deadline I believe is on Saturday. Um, so yeah, hopefully 
we'll make the right picks and, and can turn this green arrow that we got last week into an even bigger green arrow this week. But either way, if you enjoyed the video, please do drop a like down below. It's trying to 50. Leave a comment. What are you doing for Double Game Week 34? Subscribe if you're brand new. Ring the notification bell. It's everything from me. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And until next time, peace.